You thought you knew metal because you know about heavy metal, black metal, or even power metal? But what about pirate metal, kawaii metal, rap metal, or even funk metal? Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's talk about it. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited about today's video. If you clicked on this, I hope that you have a seatbelt on because you are about to be bombarded with information. Last year I was a metal newbie. I was just like a fan of Five Finger Death Punch when I was in high school. I stopped listening to metal, but I kept this in my heart, you know. Hey, I know what you're thinking. Why is this girl talking about metal when she has pictures of Taylor Swift behind her? Well, I am a pop girl, but I love to expand the genres and artists I listen to, so I would gladly appreciate that you open your heart to me today. Last year, I discovered Bad Omens, which then made me discover Spirit Box, which then made me listen again to Poppy. And the more I was listening to like different artists, the more I was like, wait, there is a lot of nuance here, a lot of artists, and also a lot of debates like, is this metal? Is this not metal? What subgenre of metal is this? Like, you're going to see this debate a lot in the metal community. Because like one thing is that all of the metal artists, they are linked by the fact that it's metal, but there are so many subgenres and nuance that it is actually like a rabbit hole that I fell down in. Like I started looking at all of the different subgenres of metal that exist. If you go to the website Music Genre Lists, you have 54 subgenres of heavy metal. If you go to Lamb Goat, you have 65 subgenres of heavy metal. And if you go to Wikipedia, you have 66 subgenres of heavy metal. So we are looking at 66 subgenres here, knowing that when it was born, heavy metal was a subgenre of rock. So I think it's actually like a brilliantly interesting case of how many ramifications can be created in a single subgenre of music. Today, I'm not going to go through the 66 subgenres that are listed on Wikipedia. I'm I'm going to go through 29 of them. These are the 29 subgenres that, in my opinion, are the most significant to the evolution of heavy metal or that are the craziest. And you kind of see what I'm talking about. A little side note to prepare this video, I asked my followers on TikTok to recommend metal bands to me and they did not disappoint. I think that right now I have like 100 bands that were recommended to me. So I am trying to go through all of them. I really want to listen to everything that people recommended me, but it's going to take a few weeks, I think. I will put the link of this list down in the description. And if you want to add like some recs that I should listen to, please feel free to go in the comments of this video. Before we go through the 29 subgenres of heavy metal, I want to explain to you how we distinguish the subgenres. The first thing that is going to distinguish the different subgenres is like the music and the instrumentation. So this is mostly going to be in regards to how the guitar, the drums and the bass is played. But from what I researched, it can also include like what additional instruments are going to be added to the band, like an orchestra or folk instruments, but more on that later. And in regards to the music, like the tempo, the structure of the songs and the vocal styles are going to differentiate the subgenres. The second thing that can distinguish metal subgenres is the lyrical themes. And this is mostly going to include from what I've seen if there are political implications in the songs or if there are religious implications in the songs. Like if you have something strong in one of these two lyrical themes, there is a good chance that it can create a subgenre of metal on its own. But more on that in the list. It is time to buckle up because we are going to go through 29 subgenres of metal right now. We're going to start with heavy metal, of course. It's the OG, it's the mother of all the subgenres. Heavy metal first appeared in the the late 60s and early 1970s in the US and the UK. Popular regional scenes include Germany, Nordic European countries like Scandinavia, Denmark, Finland, Ireland, Norwegia and Sweden, but also popular scenes include Australia and Brazil. The thing that is going to distinguish heavy metal from rock, for example, is the fact that you have powerful guitar riffs in the music, melodic solos and strong vocal performances that can include scream. Common lyrical themes of heavy metal are going to be freedom, 
freedom, rebellion, and personal experiences. Some bands of this subgenre include Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, Steppenwolf, and Saxon. A little after heavy metal was born, her little sister Doom Metal appeared. Doom Metal appeared in the early to mid 1970s in the UK and the US, and some popular regional scene today include Finland and the Northwest of US. The thing that is going to distinguish Doom Metal musically is its very slow and heavy instrumentation that creates like a very gloomy atmosphere, something that is created thanks to like low tuned guitar and distortion. Common lyrical themes of doom metal include sorrow, despair, introspection, fear, grief, and depression. Yay! Black Sabbath have also contributed to the creation of doom metal, but popular band can also include Pentagram, Candlemas, and Saint Vitus. Hi, it's Editing Leo here. When I was working on the video, I realized that I forgot to film the part about speed metal, so I'm going to do this now. Speed metal is born in the late 1970s in the UK. Musically, it's characterized by the fact that it's faster and more aggressive than the usual heavy metal sounds, and there's a heavy emphasis on complex guitar solos, and there are highly expressive vocals. Its lyrical themes are quite funny, in my opinion. You have a lot of songs revolving around occult imagery, fantasy, surreal, rebellion, and individuality. Some bands that I can recommend in this category are Motorhead, Judas Priest, Accept, Metallica, and Anthrax. Back to the original footage. Something that is interesting about heavy metal is how opposed to Christian values this genre is, so one can only laugh when in the late 1970s Christian metal appeared. <laughs> this is like really ironic. Christian metal appeared in the US and Sweden, and popular scenes today include the US, Brazil, Mexico, Germany, the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. Christian metal takes like musical inspirations from metal, but also Christian music and Christian rock. So we have an interesting mix. Without any surprise, the lyrical themes are going to include like Christian themes and traditions, the promotion of Christianity, religious expression, and evangelism. They said we are going to make metal, but promote the Bible. Some popular band of this subgenre are Striper, Petra, Mortification, Demon Hunter, and Under Oath. We also then have neoclassical metal. It is born from heavy metal in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Neoclassical metal is mostly popular in Europe and North America. The thing that is going to distinguish neoclassical metal is the technical playing borrowed from classical music and speed metal. Some common lyrical theme of classical metal include darkness, fantasy, social issues, personal struggle, philosophy, and mythology. And some wrecks of bands in this subgenre, I have Ingui, Maltsteam, Deep Purple, and Randy Rhodes. Then glam metal appeared. By the way, I'm going to say then a lot, but some of these subgenres were born at the same time. So glam metal, it is born in the late 1970s and early 1980s, and it is mostly popular in Japan, Malaysia, and the US, mostly like in New York and West Hollywood. It takes inspiration from heavy metal but also glam rock. So you're going to have upbeat music, pop hooks, but also guitar riffs and slow power ballads. And its themes are pretty fun here. It's like partying, sex, love, but also breakups and rebellion. Some bands that can be included in this category are Guns N' Roses, Van Halen, Motley Crue, Scorpions, and Death Leopard. We then move on to crust punk. I know it doesn't include metal in the name, but it can be considered a subgenre of metal. It takes inspiration from extreme and biker metal. It is born in the early 1980s in the United Kingdom. Musically, it takes inspiration from anarcho-punk with metal riffs, shrieked vocal, and shout. So vocal techniques that are very popular in metal and that is going to help put this genre in the subgenres of metal. In the lyrical theme, we are going to find nihilism, the idea of the state being oppressive, fascism, police, personal grievance, 
militarism and nuclear war. So it is quite a political heavy genre. And some bands that I can recommend to you in this category are Discharge, Extreme Noise Terror and Napalm. We then move on to Trashed Metal. It is born from heavy metal in the early 1980s. Its popular regional scene include the US, Germany, the UK and Latin America. Musically it's quite simple, it includes fast and aggressive instrumentation and intricate guitar work. Regarding the lyrical themes we are going to look at social issues, war and personal struggles. And bands that I can recommend in this subgenre include Slayer, Anthrax, Megadeth, Voivoid, Testament and Shellfire. We then move on to Black Metal, one of the most popular subgenres of heavy metal. It is born in the early to mid 1980s. Popular regional scenes include England, Scandinavia, France, Finland, Greece, Norway, Poland, US and Sweden. We're going to talk about Norway more later. What is going to characterize black metal? We have the high pitched vocals, the fast tremolo picking and the atmospheric soundscape. Black metal really is one of the subgenres that solidified metal as anti-christian because the lyrical themes would include satanism, nature, anti-christian sentiment, ethnic paganism and yeah, the small neo-Nazi movement also, but we're going to talk about that later. Some bands that are popular in this subgenre include Venom, Battery, Mayhem, Dark Tones and Immortal. Then Death Metal, you know, just to go with Black Metal. This is also born from Heavy Metal in the mid 1980s. Popular regional scenes include the US, Florida, Indonesia, Netherlands, Sweden, Norway and Poland. The biggest musical characteristics of this genre are the guttural and deep vocal, the intense guitar riffs, the powerful drumming and overall the complex song structures. And regarding the lyrical themes, you have death, violence, existentialism, political conflict and religion too. And for some bands that I can recommend in this category, you have death, possessed, psycho trip, cannibal corpse and morbid angel. I love how consistent we are with our artistic direction. <laughs> then we are going to look at alternative metal. This is quite a broad subgenres and you're going to see that some of the subgenres that I'm going to list after that are born from alternative metal. This subgenre is born in the mid 1980s in the US and it is mostly popular in California and LA. What is going to distinguish this genre is the unconventional sounds and song structures that you can find in it. And it's also going to include melodic vocals which makes it an alternative genre for heavy metal and some mid-place guitar riffs. The most common lyrical themes in this subgenre are social issues, injustice, personal struggles, anger, defiance and sadness. So like it's a bit more like focused on the personal emotions. Some artists that can be included in this subgenre are Incubus, Marilyn Manson, Nine Inch Nails and Korn. We then have funk metal and these are two words that you wouldn't expect to see together, you know what I mean? Funk metal was born in the 1980s in California and it is mostly popular in the US. As in most of the genres of metal, you are going to find the loud guitar and the guitar riffs, but what makes this genre special is that you also find the popping bass lines that you have in funk songs and the syncopated rhythms. The lyrical themes of this subgenre are going to include social and political commentaries, urban experiences and the struggle faced by communities like the black community in the US. Some bands that can be included in this subgenre are Red Hot Chili Peppers, Faith No More, Living Colors and Prismas. We then move on to avant-garde metal, which it gives me nothing, like I didn't know what to expect with this. <laughs> it is born in the 1980s, like most of the subgenres of metal, and it is popular in Scandinavia, Switzerland, Japan, US and Norway. This subgenre is going to be characterized by musical innovation. Like the studio techniques and songs structures are going to be a bit unconventional. You're going to have additional instruments like the saxophone or violins that are going to be included in the songs. You have a mix of growls and clean singing that are included in the vocal techniques. And overall, like this subgenre is a bit between progressive rock and extreme metal, so it's a bit all over the place, but it's the kind of stuff that I like. Regarding the lyrical themes, you have existential angst, introspection, cosmic imagery, transformation, breaking free from constraint and surreal. This is something that we are going to see is like you have 
several genres of metal that are characterized by like the surreal imagery in the lyrics or the fantasy imagery in the lyrics and I find it super cool. Regarding some bands that can be included in this subgenre, you have Imperial Triumphant, Voivoid, Diablo Swing, Orchestra, Faith No More and Pensée Nocturne, so I guess they are French. So we move on to Power Metal, another institution in the genre. So Power Metal is born from speed metal in the mid 1980s. Some popular scenes include Europe, North and South America, East Asia and Australia. Regarding the music, this is going to include double bass drumming, melodic lead guitar, epic and melodic instrumentation, and soaring vocals are clean and melodic high-pitched vocals. And regarding the lyrical themes, we are having a little bit of fun here because it includes mythology, heroism, fantasy worlds and fantasy themes. And some popular bands include Halloween, Blind Guardian, Stratovarius and Sonata Artica. Some of these bands were recommended to me by some of my followers, so thank you again. We then move on to Grindcore and it is born from heavy metal in the mid 80s. Where? In the UK, of course. Regarding the instrumentation, it is going to include abrasive sounding music, distorted downtuned guitar, grinding bass, high speed tempo, growls, shout, and high pitched streaks. <laughs> something like that. And regarding the lyrical themes, we are looking at urban decay, social political commentaries, dark humor and violence. And some bands that can be included in this category are Napalm Death, Repulsion, Terrorizer, Sore Throat, Abandon, Incarnate. We then move on to progressive metal. And you might be like, oh, progressive metal, but we also have alternative metal and avant-garde metal. What are you talking about? You are repeating yourself. No, it is a different subgenre, I promise. Of course, it's born in the mid 80s in the UK and the US and popular scenes include Canada, Scandinavia, Germany and Australia again. I don't know why heavy metal is so popular in Australia but I'm here for it. Musically this is going to include loud aggressive guitar sounds, experimental and classical sounds inspired from progressive rock and extended song structures. So we are looking at some Pink Floyd type of shit in the length of songs. And it's a bit different because regarding the lyrical themes we are looking at spirituality, whether it's from personal experiences or organized religion, philosophy, introspection and human condition. And some bands that can be included in this category are Dream Theater, Opeth, Mastodont and Mezugat. Then industrial metal and you're going to say what is this name? What can it mean? This one this time is born in the late 1980s in the US and the UK and some popular scenes include Germany and Switzerland. Musically it is going to be distinguished by the repeating guitar riffs, the sampling, the synthesizer, the sequencer lines and the distorted vocals. And here we are looking at lightly emo shit because lyrically it's going to include alienation, technology, dystopia, societal decay, political issues and psychological turmoil. And some bands that can be included in this category are Rammstein, Ministry, Godflesh, Fear Factory and Strapping Young Lad. So you remember that a little bit earlier I talked about alternative metal, but I'm only going to start talking about some of its children now because I'm trying to go like chronologically. So we are going to talk about rap metal now, its mother is alternative metal and it is born in the late 80s in the US. It is going to include the heavy guitar riffs of metal, but it also includes funk elements, hip hop elements and rapped vocals. Lyrically, we are looking at themes like urban life, social issues like racism and police brutality, injustices, addiction, mental health and party culture. And some bands that can be included in this category are Rage Against the Machine, White Zombie and Papa Roach. From rap metal, new metal was born in the mid 90s. This genre is, was mostly popular in the US and especially like on the west coast and it relies on hardcore punk music and industrial and hip hop musical elements. Regarding the lyrical themes, we are looking at social issues, alienation, emotions like anger, party and concert culture. And some bands that can be included in this category are Slipknot, 
Corn, Disturbed and Linkin Park. Then Metalcore was born and it is like my favorite subgenre of metal. It was born in the early 1990s in the US and the UK and musically it involves the heavy guitar riffs of course, the double bass drumming, breakdowns and some intense music parts so people can mosh at concerts and like melodic singing combined to the growls and screams of metal. The lyrical themes are going to include rebellious youth, emotional turmoil, love, breakups and social issues. And some bands that can be included in this category are Bullet For My Valentine, The Raven Age, Bad Omens and As I Lay Dying. By the way, I know there are like way more bands that I can cite in each subgenre, so if there are some that I am missing, it is normal and you can recommend them to me in the comments. We then move on to folk metal, one of the genres where first I was like what? So it is born from heavy metal in the 1990s in Europe. And it's a bit hard to like pinpoint, but it is mostly heavy metal that is going to implement elements of folk regional music. So like for example, uh, Norway might include some elements from their like folk music, France can implement elements of their folk music and so on. So you're going to find these like musical and instrumental folk elements but also the usual metal instrumentation and vocals. And also like if in the bands you don't have the folk instruments, they are going to be imitated by keyboards. And here regarding the lyrical themes we are looking at paganism, nature, fantasy, the regional mythology and history. Some bands that I can recommend in this category are Elevati, Carpiclani, Anciferum, Fintrol, and Corno, and I hope that I am pronouncing all of this right. We are moving to my favorite one, like <laughs> this is the funniest one to me, Pirate Metal, like who came up with that? I'm obsessed. It is born from folk metal, first in the 80s in Germany, but then it became like a bigger phenomenon in the 2000s in the US and the UK. And it's going to mix like the heavy metal instrumentation with like the sea shanties musical elements. If you don't know what a sea shanty is, it is basically like the songs that people doing heavy labor on ships would sing. If you were roaming, like you would sing a sea shanty with the boys to motivate yourself. It's kind of like listening to Megan Thee Stallion in the gym. So this genre is honestly so fun. Like you have metal and then pirate songs and imagery. Are you kidding me? And some bands that I can recommend in this category are Running Wild, Ailstorm and Legerstein. Of course, you couldn't have pirate metal without Viking metal. It is also born from black and folk metal. It is born in the late 1980s and mid 1990s in Northern Europe. And here it's mostly popular in the Nordic countries, Austria, but also Canada, the UK, the US, Netherlands and Russia. So it's going to be characterized by like the heavy metal elements, but also like the swift galloping paces of folk songs. And it's going to include all of the traditional instruments from the countries where the music is from and like melodic elements but also like the screams from heavy metal. Viking metal is mostly going to be distinguished by its lyrical themes that include North mythology, North Paganism and the history of the Viking Age. And regarding some bands that I can recommend, we are looking at Wolfshant, Barbarian, Destroy Destroy Destroyed, Enslaved and Falconback. We then move on to uh, a delicate one, uh, but I wanted to talk about it because I think that it's like mm, the thing that we don't talk about in metal but it's there. <laughs> I'm talking about national socialist black metal. So it is a genre that is born from black metal in the 1990s in Europe and musically it's not that special, it's just going to be black metal musical elements but lyrically that's where we are like that's where she's a special kid. Um, eh. <laughs> Nationalist uh, socialist, if you don't know what it refers to, it is basically like the Nazis. And it's going to include neo-Nazi and neo-fascist lyrical themes and white nationalism and satanism. For 
obvious reasons, I'm not going to recommend bands in this category. I still wanted to talk about it because we cannot like ignore the fact that in Europe you had and you still have scenes of metal that are going to promote white nationalism and I think that it's a very uncomfortable part of the metal genre but I wanted to talk about it because fascism is rising again in Europe and it's highly concerning. We don't want to think about it but music and culture are heavily going to impact that and the more comfortable you are in these political ideologies the more you're going to find them in music so be careful don't promote fascism and yeah now you know about national socialist black metal let's move on to a funnier theme groove metal let's go so this is a subgenre that is born from trash metal in the early 1990s in like louisiana texas and new york it is going to include raspy singing and screaming yelling growling down-tuned guitar heavy guitar riffs and syncopated rhythms and like unlike trash metal it's more going to be focused on the heavy sounds rather than the speed of the guitars. Lyrical themes include intense emotions, anger, social issues, darkness and fantasies and some popular bands that I can recommend in this category include Pantera, Exorder, Sepultura, Lamb of God, Machine Head and Five Finger Death Punch. The band that I really liked but I'm not... I'm like a bit uncomfortable now because like the singer got charged with domestic violence like accusations and also I'm a bit like Ugh, why we then move on to gothic metal and it is born from heavy metal and gothic rock in the early 1990s popular regional scenes are going to include England Finland the Netherlands Norway Sweden Germany, Italy, Poland, the US and Greece. It is mostly distinguished musically by the guttural growls and black metal shrieks mixed with the atmospherics of glam rock. And lyrical themes include melodrama, fantasy, romance, dark and gloom. It is interesting to note that it's one of the subgenres of metal where you are going to find more female vocalists than in other subgenres. But like it doesn't mean that the subgenre is like synonymous with female singers. I just think that it's really cool and some bands that I can recommend to you are Paradise Lost, Type O Negative, Lacuna Coil, The 69 Eyes and Theater of Tragedy. We then move on to Symphonic Metal, a subgenre that is also born from heavy metal in the early 1990s and it is mostly popular in Finland, Scandinavia and Netherlands. It's quite simple, it's mostly going to be heavy metal songs that includes or implements orchestras and and elements of orchestral classical music and symphonic instruments. So this subgenre like implements orchestral classical music elements, symphonic instruments, sometimes choirs and even full orchestras. So I think it's really like cool. I really like orchestral music and when it's mixed with other genres of music I really think that it elevates the song and it's really nice. Lyrical themes that are popular in this genre are fantasy, mythology, epic storytelling. Some bands that I can recommend to you in this category are Epica, Nightwish, Within Temptation, Camelot and Therion. We then move on to electronic core and it is born from metalcore in the 2000s. It is mostly popular in Europe, North America and East Asia too. This subgenre includes like metalcore music elements with electronic music elements like dubstep or trance music. And you're also going to have the electric guitar, the bass, the drums that you are going to find in metalcore music but it is also mixed with like electronic drums turntables, samplers and like it is heavily relying on programming. Some lyrical themes that are quite common in electronic horror include dystopia, AI, hedonism and rage against abusive authority. And some bands that can be included in this category are Enter Shikori, Bring Me the Horizon, Electric Callboy and Wargasm. And I'm going to end with like something that I found really funny, it's kawaii metal. Of all the things that you could expect, I wouldn't have expected that but I discovered it 
it like while I was doing my research. So it is born from heavy metal and it's one of the most recent subgenres of heavy metal because it's born in the 2010s. It is born in Japan and it's actually coming from like a producer who wanted to create a band that would include the G-pop like elements with metal. Musically it's going to include like the instruments from heavy metal and trash metal with all of the G-pop melodic in elements. What is going to characterize this genre the most is the kawaii aesthetic that it's going to use. Regarding the lyrical themes it's going to be cute and a bit childlike like overall is going to be kawaii. From my research I found out that the band that really pioneered this subgenre is baby metal but some bands that can be included in this category are Deadlift, Lolita, Iron Bunny, Lady Baby and Kamen Joshi. Here are the 29 subgenres of heavy metal that I wanted to talk about today. So if we are doing the math it's 29 subgenres out of 66 if you want to hear me talk about more subgenres of metal, you can leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching this video. I had like a lot of fun doing it and like it was so interesting to deep dive into all of these subgenres. If you are an expert of metal and you saw me say wrong things, please correct me in the comments. I tried to be very thorough in my research and I learned a lot of things, but I am not an expert of this genre of music. So if I was wrong, please correct me in the comments. If you want to see more videos on metal, you can check out my reactions by songs by Bad Omens and Poppy. And if you want more, you can follow me right now and activate the bell because I am writing a video on the birth of Norwegian black metal, which is one of the most significant subgenres of metal in my opinion, historically speaking. I used a lot of different sources for this video, so I'm going to put the list in the description along with the list of metal bands that my followers recommended to me. If you want to support me, you can like and share this video. If you want to recommend metal bands to me, you can leave a comment. If you want to support me, you can follow me or you can go to my Patreon, the link is in the description. I was your host Leo, these were 29 subgenres of metal and I will see you very soon.